In this jungle guide, I'm going to have a look at four fundamentals that all junglers must have. And this will be if you want must. It will be if you want diamond, platinum, gold, silver. It doesn't matter because a lot of people who end up climbing or want to climb maybe have three out of four, two out of four. They do one thing or two things extremely well. And there's always one of these fundamentals really, really lacking. And it costs you wins you don't deserve to lose. And I think we all agree that wins we deserve, we should have. And the wins we don't deserve, we should steal. But all of these fundamentals, I realized, had one thing in common. They fall under what I'm terming the Cascade Jungle Rule. And when you're finished with this video and understand the four fundamental forces of the jungle or the universe, it will be much easier to carry, win, climb, improve, and of course, reach your goals. So as always, if you do enjoy this video and learn something, please consider leaving a like and of course subscribing. Comment below how your climb is going. Let me know. Where did you start? Where are you? And where do you expect to end up? And now a brief announcement on the bootcamp coming up for the end of August. And yes, that will be through a bootcamp with Gosu Academy and of course Coach Kybit alongside me to make you a genius League of Legends player in 10 days. And apparently I only wear vests in my content so that to eat this from Instagram. But as you can see, I do look quite teachery. But what shall we be learning and when shall we be learning it? End of August, first week of September, 22nd of August is the first day we shall start. Coach Kybit and myself will take turns giving you master lessons as well as having VOD review classes and a variety of other jungle coaches and League of Legends lane coaches helping you out every single day. And obviously I'm a jungle EDU YouTuber so I believe and trust all the videos I put out there but having a sort of active learning principle behind everything we do is significantly better. You've got the teachers and you've got the coaches overseeing how you're learning and giving you actionable goals to apply those tips to your games. You simply sign up through the site, you get access to the exclusive Discord and wait and be ready. There are a variety of packages available for you. Basically, for the cost of one coaching session, you're getting about 30 coaching sessions. And obviously, there is VOD review access 100% to everything you need. If you miss a lesson, you will be able to watch it on VODs. Click the link in the description below and it will be pinned in the comment section for 10% off for the first people who sign up. I'm really looking forward to talking more about this in the coming weeks and I look forward to seeing everybody there. And maybe if we get like a thousand signups, I'll do a Fiora cosplay. Okay, all of these are directly from my coaching. Obviously, these aren't the straight VODs. I'm going to upload those full VODs to Patreon. They're much slower, so not really conducive for a YouTube video. But I'm just going to go to the games, back to the games and highlight the most important aspect and the most important tip that I had from these sessions. We're starting off with a diamond, we're gonna have a platinum, we're gonna have a gold, we're gonna have a silver bronze, we're gonna have one from every rank. However, the common thing here will be that the fundamentals apply to all ranks. It's not really limited. Now, the first one, we're gonna start off with a more complicated one because the tracking elements of this one are what do you do when you expect a jungler to do something and they don't, which is quite by and large what low elo, mid elo junglers complain about, right? You expect you know, Diana, I'm going to full clear down. It's a bottom lane meta. Did that video already. Volibrig is leashed here. He's going to perhaps five camp up. He could three camp gank. He could do any number of ganks as a volley. But, but that's what you expect. And it's really easy to track people when they're skilled and they do what you expect. But when they do random things like they would in any other elo, how do you respond to this? Now, the better you are as a player, the more you can absolutely punish the enemy jungler for bad decisions. And obviously that comes from tracking and decisiveness. Now, what happens is we go ahead and we do our wolves, you'll see the Volibear here, ganks bottom lane, which you know, as a level 2 Volibear, I'm not a huge fan of this, but he times his E, he flashes, he hits his W, that's a free kill. Now at this point, you might be thinking, well, I could do this, right? But obviously prior here, it's still a Yone, Volibear might be paranoid and just go straight to it, so you don't really have much time to do much more than the red, you see? Which means as Diana, what do you do well? We farm first, we control the map quickly. Volibear will outgank us. There's nothing we can do about that. However, we can play to our strengths. In this case, full clearing, right? So we'll let him waste his time being paranoid about this potential loss of buff. And in the meantime, we'll just control everything. You know, absolutely everything. But instead, he tries to kind of match the, the, the Volibear's ganking tempo going for Kiana versus a Yone, which, as we all know, isn't exactly what <laughs> lane you want to be ganking. And uh, the Kiana goes the wrong direction to her jungler and will die for this, which is... You know, it's not your fault, but this is a high variance ganking maneuver that we've done. The Diana goes back down to her right side to do a full clear. And the next time we see Volibear right there, did you see that? Here we go. He shows up. Come on, Mr. Bear. There we go. Very briefly, okay? He showed up very, very briefly. But as soon as that happens, you press tab. And you, if you, you're not going to be able to click on him, obviously, and see the red buff. But I think it's pretty obvious that whether he did Raptor's Krugs... Um, these aren't Krugs, whether they did Raptors Red or Red Raptors doesn't really matter. But given his prior thing, I would, you know, presuppose with this prior thing direction, probably Raptors, but it doesn't really matter. All we know is we, he did Blue Grom, gank bot lane, got paranoid about losing his Red, did that, which is actually what he did do, took his Raptors, and now is taking top Scuttle. Now, if you had just done a full straight clear, right, tried to do something in this lane and perhaps got in this crab, 
hidden this and left a ward here because you don't need a scanner first rotation as a farming jungler, that would be great because now you can time the Volibear and see him if he comes back. And if he commits wastings of times, which most junglers will do, you can yeet his tier 2 Grom. So we didn't react to his randomness. We tracked it, we predicted it a little bit, and then once he got visual confirm over this ward, we know exactly what he is doing. So the issue here is we're going to have a knock-on effect to this, right? And what we're going to do here is then is obviously finish up our clear, but now we're way behind. We have 26 CS. You know, a jungle that wastes that much time as our Thresh Room's mid lane, very nicely done, shouldn't be able to be close in CS to us. Now here's where things get really interesting because obviously at this point, you're going back for your tier 2 Grom, you press tab, you see him coming straight down the mid lane. He didn't do this loop back and come back down because then his CS would have gone up, right? Because he crossed your 16, takes Scuttle, that's 20, but he shows back up mid lane, right? He's got one extra that can be from a residual minion, it can be from a ward kill. Uh, usually that's where you'll pick up one extra CS. But the point is, we press tab, we see, oh, Ionian Roots of Lucidity. Cool, right? Great. So you just pocket that information. That's it. Pocket the information. Watch now. F keys. There's no reason for you to be looking in the sand. Do not ostrich jungle. Maybe there's another video. Watch his pathing here. You see this? Boom. Where's he going? Oh, wolves. Because I know he did blue gromp, red raptors, scuttle, back to base, ran to the mid lane, saw him move down. He's going to be taking the wolves. And now I can presuppose that he's going to be taking... This Grump, tier 2 Grump. I don't think that's a stretch of Einsteinian intelligence. Now, in the coaching VOD, and of course this will be up on Patreon, I asked him, where do you think the Volibear is going to be? Or wh why are you going top lane here? He said, well, in case the Volibear are gangs. Now, I don't want to see any shit about jungle tracking because I've coached every single ELO from Master all the way down to Iron and I analyze challenger content on my other channel every single day. This mistake is made 99% of the time. These little things are not stitched together. This is something I pride myself on and love to teach, but it isn't something people are really focusing on in the early game. They're not focusing on it as much every single game. They're not consistent about it. So we go up here to Shadow, realize, oh, Rengar is, you know, level four and basing. Now I'm wondering, is it warded? Did they see me? No, okay, All right. So I fall back down to my Raptors, uh, Wolves. Whereas we could have just said, well, I know he's down. I know he's down. So, doof. Hold, shadow, look for this, you know, because you know he's probably going to do this. So let's, let's position ourselves to counter gank this, right? Especially with the Yone having prior moving down as well. And the first time we reacted to the Volibear, we took away our advantage of fast clears, resetting, and really getting six quickly. The second time now, we've compromised, again, the same thing, but allowed Volibear that tempo control to cascade from his early ganks, which we should not have allowed. Watch this, though. We finish walls, and Volibear shows up. Aha! I mean, I mean, this is this is funny in and of itself, but all you're going to see here is, oh, look, dude has 29 CS now. Plus 8, right? 4, 8. 21 plus 8, 29. You follow? Good. Very good. Now, what happens is irrelevant, really, to the context of the tracking, but, you know, we take this. Obviously, the, ah, the extra bit here that we discussed that was quite interesting is, watch this here. We're doing this, you watch the Yone, watch the Yone. So this is a secondary thing, right? This is the primary thing I want you to take away from this, but this is a secondary thing for tracking because you're not just tracking junglers, you're tracking vision. Look at him, he moves up, and then he moves back. What did he do? He warded, he warded. So we know it's warded. Now, we're scanning up here for no reason. We're wasting our scanner because we didn't track the Volibear properly. And now we don't have scanner. But if we saw the Yone do this, we 100% know, guy warded here. Which means, ah, oh, perhaps I should just go ahead and scan. Now, we have 10 seconds scanner, which means it's easy enough to do this, this, and this. You don't need to scan for 10 seconds in one spot. You scan, and you move. You get everything in, as, as much as possible with that scanning activation, and now you're saved. But because we didn't do that, didn't register any of this, okay, we get spotted going down. Now they're going to use their pride to go for the dragon anyway. Yona's already moved with that advantage. We're going for a coin flip steal, which we don't get because we're too late. And no matter what happens here, this is not good decision making, okay? This is not where we want to be. This is not where we should be. And we could be doing so much more with our kit, okay? And even so, Yone yeets himself some kills and it actually works out really, really badly for us. Okay? That's, that's one thing. Now, the final nail in the coffin. This is the Cascade Jungle Effect. This video is about cascading. If you've watched the expansion, you know exactly what I mean. The domino effect, if you will. We're going to the top set and I said... Where do you think the Volibear is going? And his immediate response was, ah, probably, probably blue. Because the blue is 
the blue is spawning on the map, right? But if we track this 21 to 29, we know there's 215 before these are up again. So we can assess that in our minds. And secondly, watch the respawn timer. When the Vodiver respawns, this is still not close to respawning. So his, his decision we made here where he's going out of base. Now, if you look at it from this perspective, ah, well, you know, probably not here because these are definitely not up. Blue's definitely not up. And these two camps are. Plus, Diana's going to be starting topside, so I could shadow this. And that's exactly the kind of tracking we need to have because if you, if you knew this, whoopsie, replay glitch that, if you knew this, right, all of a sudden you're probably respecting the fact that Rengar's pushing and Volibear could be roaming top lane. And because of all of this, this bad fight that we forced, Blitzcrank also has roam prior. Now, I'm not going to necessarily tell you, hey, I know the Blitzcrank's roaming top lane. I mean, I do some disgusting things as Zyra. I'm sorry to all junglers when I play support Zyra. I do things that even a Blitzcrank would not um, because obviously I'm tracking and I'm a jungler as well. But you would at least hit this. And the most important thing is here. If you played everything properly so far, and we still ended up in the situation, you would be level 6, which means you can slide on into a bush here and set up for a counter gank. You have 6, Rengar has 6, is not going to have it, Blitzcrank's not going to have it, and even if they show up with numbers, you go, oh shit, I better leave, that's fine. You know, you're still looking to make the right plays, and I would hit this plant just as a bit of safety, just to see what, what's up, you know? And he doesn't do this, he's not thinking about any of this, and Valibur, of course, shows up here with a gank. We rotate, nothing we can do. Nothing we can do. So the Volibear is going to take this lead and he's going to run with it. He's going to absolutely run with it for the rest of the game and it's going to make it very, very difficult for the Dino to play the game. Now what does end up happening is, you know, the first kill that we get ends up being, let's see, 10 minutes. 10 minutes because we couldn't, we just didn't have that same advantage. Um, we didn't have the, the same advantage. We didn't have the advantage we should have had over Volibear when he was making these mistakes, okay? And so that fundamental tracking principle, tracking bears, needs to be applied to every single game you play, no matter what your rank, because as you can see, we can expect things, and they cannot do them, but we still have all the tools necessary to project what they will be doing based upon their own randomness. Okay, this one I absolutely love, and it's from a gold cane that I've been coaching for a long time now. We finally made the jump from gold 4 to plat 4, and we're going now for the diamond push. And... He ends up winning this game through excellent gameplay. He plays Ross, he plays Blue. He knows exactly what to do once he eventually gets form. And that's great, right? That's absolutely great. But our early game is still the weakest point, And we've really improved it where we're not losing too hard and we're always within touching diff uh, distance. But this one for me was such a big issue that affects a lot of junglers. They don't realize the lead they have. You know, you don't appreciate the things you have in your life kind of thing. Now, the Lux goes ahead and places this absolute absolutely exquisite ward i mean have you ever seen such a beautiful ward except for what maybe here would be a little bit better but we're gonna go about our business right you're not gonna see viego directly and i want you to pay attention to this from the previous point as well you have to keep using your f keys to keep track of the enemy jungler because now you see this if we were looking at this and we clicked and say hey wait a second he's on his he's on his red now if he's some kind of genius of von viego who kind of recognized lux doing this Therefore, he's kiting it out. Cool, but he's also not doing it properly anyway. And he should also realize that any half brain citizen of the Republic can click on this and be like, I see you, you know that, right? And the issue is not that we see this because as soon as this icon disappears on the minimap, you know it's gone. It's seeing it 10, 12 seconds before it's gone, which means you can assess. Now, based upon the kiting of the red, and I think as you're busy doing this and walking between camps, keep looking, keep, cl keep clicking, keep looking, because you're gonna see him move up, which means most likely he's gonna be doing a full clear, right? So if a Viego is wasting his time doing a full clear at the stage, well, that means you should very much be able to smite this, gank this, because he's, you know, half HP. It's still tough, but we can at least do a drive-by and potentially look for this. This will depend on the coin flip of your bot lane, prior, rotation, so on. You're not going to have smite for the bottom uh, scuttle, but at the very least, you quickly take this, and if you really deem it doomed for this... Shit scuttle, don't die for it, obviously. Just reset and, you know, counter gank a potential Viego running across and uh, then carry on doing your cane stuff. But what he does is very interesting because that's the tempo we should have, right? That's the tempo control we should have 100%. I think we can all agree on that. The issue is the Viego does not deserve tempo for doing a very slow gold one, platinum four level uh, full clear. So we take it and now we're afraid of what? Here we go, we go in base now. That's fine. But we should have recognized from clicking that we see this. And also, if 
he doesn't show up on this, then where the hell is he? Okay, it's, it's unlikely he's looping back without showing. And mid lane was pushing. So we could have very easily gone straight to the mid lane after the scuttle, taken this gank. Like, we should be in the, in the mid lane right now. Let's have a look. Boom. He's right here. Th the distance between us and him should be this to this, which means now he's trailing us. And if we do have Bob Pryo, we can go for the scuttle. If we don't have Bob Pryo, we cannot waste our time with him. We can just flank and try and gank bot lane. This will depend on your bot lane. Obviously, a low Seraphine, a Ziggs is not exactly the best gank against a Lissandra Silva, but it's something you can look to do. Yeah, you can look to do it. And if they're very, very low, it just might even be cleanup. The vehicle is going to be trailing you the whole time. So you have tempo control. He's following you. Win-win. But because we don't abuse this, right? He's going to wait for his E. Boom. Okay, he obviously snuck around this side so we didn't see it. Now he uses his E. We stay out to look. Viego's going to go mid lane. Lux is going to go into a wave to look for this. Hits a really nice binding, but we're trailing. We're trailing the play. We could look to do something on, onto the, the Twisted Fate, but of course he has Flash. It is still a Viego who's going to become the Lux. Slow field, slow field. And now we'll be, we're playing behind tempo. Now we have to flash that yellow card as much as possible. Flash the, the possibility of being hit by it. We need to try and get as deep under tower as possible so that when they do chase us down here, you know, you don't die. And obviously becoming Kane when you kill him under tower as Viego is the biggest win I can imagine because you can just E away and Q away. So huge, ex huge, ex <laughs> a huge example of, hey, I have tempo control, but nah, why don't I give it to you? Now what happens is, of course, what we decide to do is we decide to loop back down, a little bit of loop, I think, to abuse the gank that we could have looked for had we just done this in the first place. You see, because they haven't based yet. So this gank is now compromising our sequencing, and it's going to give the Viego a lot of power. Now, the thing I've been talking about a lot is contorting the map and the enemy jungle to follow you around, which by going for this, all right, you see, the Viego is actually shadowing. Now, we had a look at this. We didn't know this in the moment, obviously, because this was live coaching into the VOD coaching. We didn't know this, but we thought, okay, you know, maybe and he thought it's his game. He thought maybe I could try do something here, which, of course, noble cause. And what you're going to do is you're going to see the, the Viego gank here. So now you know, ah, he's based and he did his blue side. The order of which we don't know. We don't know. It's unlikely he did Krug's Raptors and it comes from the bottom side. Definitely not something that would happen with this timing frame. So we know he either based and took this and came bot. And then went mid lane, or he did these reset and same thing. But the interesting thing was how we forced him to our side. You know, we forced him to our side of the map, even though he probably didn't want to go there, probably wanted to go top side. So even though that happens, right, it's really funny because now we want to protect our top side from counter jungling. Could you solo dragon if you were a volleyball? Yes, but you know, it takes so long now. He actually thought you were on the bottom side doing the dragon or something. Who, kno who knows what the uh, Viego is doing? And we have a bit of a mechanical misplay. As I said, he is a very, very good cane, not. Um, not, not, ooh, the Ogot ultimate is just uh, candy there, but not, not the best start, right? Not, not the best start at all, at all, because we get a bit flustered, we lose tempo control, we mechanically misplay that situation, we broke it down in the, in the coaching VOD, that'll be on Patreon as well, we broke everything down, now we lose a random scuttle as well, it's deep warded, it's just not good, the Viego's gonna go ahead and use this to go blue side, here we go, and then he's gonna use his pride to take a dragon, and he's going to end up getting the Herald as well. So I can skip forward to that. Also, maybe if I can time it, there you go. You know, he's got the Herald. He's 101. We're struggling. We're struggling to keep up with the fact that the Viego has objective pain crown control. All because we gave up tempo level 3. The, the game could have been radically different. In this example, I want to have a look at what happens when you're playing more for yourself. You don't trust your teammates. You're looking to farm quite, you know, repetitively doing laps around the jungle. However, it's not always as simple as just show up top side to bottom side and farm and keep doing that. You do have to understand what side of the map you need to end up on, what we're actually trying to accomplish when we leave the base, and we're not just trying to farm. You have to block yourself up from counter jungling as well, but also if you ensure the enemy jungler is ganking your lanes because you're just not being that proactive, what are you doing to offset that as much as possible? I will allow the coaching to do the talking for this one. There we go. You know, you're up two levels. And I think that's, from what you've explained to me, this is what you want from a personal point of view. Like, up two levels as soon as possible, right? You're not, it's, it's just the few little moments you can have. We die, right? Blue buff is spawning soon. Because you did Krugs, Raptors, Wolves, Blue, your sequencing is a little bit compromised in the second rotation, but after the third rotation, it's fixed, right? So this Gromp is going to spawn right there. Perfect. Why are we going topside? Because we're stuck in this, this Mundo loop of farming, farming, farming. Uh, 
Teammates, all dying, useless. Farming some more. Uh, dragon, okay, I take. All right, teammates, useless. Okay, farming some more. And that's fine. But the one thing you have to control, in addition to having two level leads, is the objective ping pong, right? Table tennis. We took this. Opportunistic. Ruthless. I liked it. There's a Warwick player, volleyball player. I always enjoy seeing that. Now, though, this is the goal. Eight minutes. I want this sucker. So, because you are sequencing perfectly, you know that the Wolves are up. The Grump's going to be up in just a second. The Blue's going to be spawning. Maybe what I'm going to do is just yeet on down here a little bit. Have a look. Gankable? Gankable? No? Okay, cool. Blue, Grump, Wolves. Gankable? Or Gankable? No? Okay, carry on sequencing. Or Blue Grump Wolves with the intention of full sequencing. Zach shows up here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You see? So once you've taken that early dragon like that, swap. Swap the rotation. So the benefit to you dying is it allows you to, to stop going top to bottom, but now to go bottom to top because we want this. You see, we want this sucker. That's exactly what we want. And the Zach is going to start to get really hurt by the objectives and the camps you're stealing from him as he just walks through these, this vision uh, forest. So going down here is the problem because now you end up here. Now what? Nothing. There's no, no lanes. They're all dead. No, no counter jungling to happen because you saw the Zach go through this, this area. But if you were doing this, you could always cut down and maybe... Look to cut the Zac off one, because you said you're strong 1v1, right? So if you see the Zac gank mid laner go down, and you're here sequencing, well now's an opportunity to also kill him. Potentially. And then go bottom lane yourself. Because this is not a concern, because he's dead. So there's a way, I think there's way more players available to you if you just swap your sequencing in this, in this, in this moment. And I think the reasons are good. But at the same time, if you, if you have good power thing for good reasons, you will always have way more options for good players than a bad power thing. You know, like if you go down here, you've got no options, really. But if you yeah. go up here, there's so many. Here now, for example, we see him, and our bot lane <laughs> does good work, right? Oh, I think, I think honestly, I think it's the only angle because your, 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 your mindset has to be like, I took the dragon, I took his red, he's on the bottom side, he just came down here, he's down here, no reason being chased by, by an Ezreal. I'm gonna, Cut the sequence and do this. So even if you were going down, as I said, a full sequence from top to bottom makes no sense. But doing the quadrant into this, very good. And look at this. Like, he's down a lot of CS, but look at the work he's doing. So me, if if I'm in this situation, I'm already kiting the Raptors down. I see the Zac immediately. I'm like, yes, thank you so much. I'm starting this. I click on this and have a look, right? I click and have a look. Okay, he chunks and pushes out the Aurelia. Oh, I'm so excited right now. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this. I'm going to wait in this bush for her to come back. And then I'm going to Darius her and then use the Herald. Right, and finally, I just want to talk about jungle detachment. This is where you'll have junglers who are, you know, having good games, bad games, doesn't really matter. But they're able to make a really good play. All right. And then they just ditch their team in some capacity. So what you're going to see is a Belveth use a Herald for three towers mid lane. We're going to kill the Kane. We're going to kill the Malzahar. The whole team is going to rotate to the situation. And then we're going to translate that to a red steel. Take a crab and go to the bot lane. Kill them again. Take a dragon. And the tower bottom lane is going to be so low, but we're going to ignore it. And we're going to do a full sequence from bottom side to top side. While our lane is, okay, are pushed out in the side lanes. Bottom lane and top lane because there's nothing else for them to do. And instead of shadowing them and keeping that aggression and taking those towers... We are just doing a full sequence when we don't need to. So staying out too long can cause you to be so detached from your team that they're trying to play the game while you're farming. And that's, you know, that's a big issue that the distance between you and your team. And this will impact you directly even when you do Barons. Because look at this, right? We take a Baron, which is good, juicy, fun, nice. Two of our teammates are dead. Nothing we can do about it. We have a lot of gold. In fact, everyone on our team has gold. So let's just reset together, spend on something, and then look to push, you know, down and end the game. Because you got three inhibs down, so we can definitely do that. But what our jungler does, is again, greeds for more farm, looking for the final amount of gold to get more of Mortiers. Our Garen and Caitlyn spawn, they're coming down here ready to siege. We're waiting for the Azir Bard. We don't really want to be here. You know, we want to wait for them for sure, but we can kind of just drift and siege. You just don't get engaged on. Be cautious. Let the waves push in. Push this out a little bit. Push this out a little bit. Wait for them to join us. It's all good. Don't base now for more of Mortiers. So now your team's basically going, well, we can do literally nothing. And uh, we're waiting for you. And basically, we go farming, we go farming. Our team's just waiting and waiting and waiting. Can we just end the game? And you'll find a lot of times you lose games where you're winning is purely because you end up being so far away from your team that no one can really do anything. 
There's no reason to go for that dragon. Do you need the dragon salt to win? No, you don't. And because of this, our team is again trying to push in, trying to push in. We're on the dragon. And eventually their impatience is gonna reach peak boiling point and the enemy team is gonna make a pick and you're gonna, you're gonna lose the fight, which is exactly what happens in this game. You have it, really some great coaching examples that show you no matter what rank someone has, if they lack one of these fundamental forces of the jungle, you're gonna struggle to exactly find those win conditions that you need or you're gonna see the win conditions and then throw them out the window. If you want to understand more about how to jungle in the new meta, click the video in the box in the top right. If you want to fix your suboptimal jungling and bad habits that can elevate you to the next level, click the video in the box in the bottom right.